Hey there, welcome to Get In Flight, I'm Joshua. So last year I did a video about spray foam in wheelbarrow tires to see if it would work. And I tried three different kinds to see which one would work the best. I got a lot of questions on the longevity of the spray foam within tires. Would it work? Would it not work? I had a lot of people saying it wouldn't work for a week. And then I've had other people saying they've been using a, a spray foam filled tire for, for years. And so I wanted to do a little more testing and see which applications spray foam in tires would work and which applications you really shouldn't try it on. So in addition to that wheelbarrow video, I also did another one where I filled two tires and a garden cart and I loaded with over 350 pounds of water and, and pulled it behind my car at five miles an hour down the road. And it absolutely destroyed the spray foam. Didn't hold up at all. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. You can check it out as well. But I wanted to give it a little bit more of a fighting chance. I got a riding lawnmower that had some bad tires. I filled one front tire with spray foam, one rear tire with spray foam, and I also filled two tires on that same style garden cart and loaded it with a bunch of water weight, but closer to 150, 160 pounds of weight. And I drove them around for several months, and now I wanna show you the results. All right, so I've been running the spray foam tires in this trailer for a little over eight weeks now. And I've been driving it every two or three days, moving it around, giving it some good workout, and it's not holding up. The spray foam is getting collapsed and it's just, it's just degrading within the tire. So for this amount of weight and this application, I don't know that the spray foam is the appropriate answer. But let's go check over and look at the riding lawnmower because that is a different story. All right, so here we are at the riding lawnmower. We've got a front tire filled and a rear tire filled. Now this has been filled for over three months. So four weeks longer than the trailer with the weight. And this is holding up pretty darn well. Um, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at how well this is actually working. Uh, I think that in general with the spray foam, the longer it sits, the more opportunity for compression. So if this is, if you're gonna use this on something that you're gonna use, you know, once every six months, it's gonna sit on the same spot. You have a high potential for flat spots using spray foam within tires. If it's something that you're gonna move every couple days, it might actually be a viable solution because you know these tires are definitely more solid than the other ones. I'm sure that there's some breakdown with with the spray foam inside there. But ultimately I think it really comes down to a weight to foam ratio. The more foam you have to weight, the less it's gonna break down, the more it can hold. Because this rear tire, there's a lot of foam in here and it is held up. There are a few spots that are going a little flatter than the others. And as opposed to the trailer that's got a lot of weight on a small footprint, you know, these are pretty beefy tires, they're pretty thick. So ultimately it's a weight to foam ratio. You know, the more foam you can have to less weight, the better it's gonna perform for you. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a magic bullet. I know that the absolute best solution is to buy a new tire or to buy inner tubes. However, I wanted to see what it would do, how it would work, and if it's a viable solution to get you another season out of your tires. So is Big Gap Spray Foam put into tires a magic bullet? Absolutely not. Best solution is to buy new tires, buy some new inner tubes, add some slime to those inner tubes. There's lots of different solutions out there. I really was just curious to know how it would perform. And now we know that it's really a foam to weight ratio. So if you have something that's lighter weight and bigger tires, foam might be a great option for you. If you got something that's high weight like a wagon with small area in the tires, Foam probably isn't gonna work well for you. And even in the best scenario, is this something that you're gonna spray spray foam into a rear riding mower tire and you're gonna use it for the next six years? No, guys, it's not that at all. It's something that's gonna get you an extra season, maybe two, depending on the application, something to get by until you can get another tire or to move on to a different machine. It's not a magic bullet. It's not even the proper way to fix a flat tire. It's something that I would thought, hey, Spray foam, I wonder if it works in tires. And so I thought I'd try it out and I wanted to share my experience with you. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not saying that you should or should not do this. I just wanted to show my curiosity and my experiments with spray foam. You know, I had a lot of people suggest other things to use as well, filling inner tubes. You know, buy a new tube and then fill that with spray foam. I tried that and I really didn't get good results in the curing. It really didn't cure, there was no there was no air inside the tube to cure the foam. Other people have said that they had decent results getting it to cure. 
So, your mileage may vary. It's interesting the comments you get on these types of videos. I had a lot of people say, well, why don't you just buy a solid state tire? Or, you know, I can buy a, a brand new tire from Harbor Freight for $12.99. Guys, you, you gotta make sure that you're looking at all the specifics, the axle bore size, the tire radius size, the, the wheel size, all that kind of stuff. Because replacing those two tires on that trailer are $30, $35 a piece. You can't go buy the, the eight inch wheels and use them on that little trailer to pull behind a riding lawnmower. And ultimately, you do you. You figure out what's gonna work for you. If you've used spray foam in the past and you had good results, leave a comment. Let me know what you used it on and how it's working for you. If you used it and it was a terrible mistake, you'd never do it again, leave a comment on that below as well and let me know what you used on and what it failed at. You know, I've also had people suggest, why don't you go and get your, your tires filled at a commercial facility that does tractor or heavy equipment foam. Yeah, you could do that, but at that point, you might as well just order a solid tire for your small yard equipment because I'm pretty sure that the price to go to a commercial tire foam place where they use two-part foams and make it and fill it to fill your tire, you're gonna be spending more than if you just bought a solid state tire off of the internet and had it delivered and installed. So ultimately, this video is a fun experiment. Take from it what you will. If you enjoyed it and you gained some value from it, consider subscribing and leave me a comment down below. If you're into DIY projects, check out GanderFlight.com. Until next time, I'm Joshua. You've been watching GanderFlight. Take care and pay it forward.